Hi, um, I'm Luke, uh, LSB. Um, today I'm just going to go through one of my tracks, Overthinking. Um, just to not really, well, look look at some of the production, but just look at look look at how the tune was made. Um, I've had a few people just email me and just 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 really ask about it. Well, I think two did actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, and just it's it's a track for those that haven't heard it. Come out on Spearhead Records, uh, June this year, 2012. Uh, it's it, the reason I chose it is because it. it highlights a lot of the um, techniques that I use generally in production. I use the word technique quite loosely. Um, it's it's just it's a simple track. You can hear it in the background. Um, for those who might not be familiar with it, um, why are you even watching this? <laughs> no, seriously, here it is in the background. I'll just play it now. So as you can hear, it's just a, a simple bass line roller with some nice musical sounds, um, excellent vocal, um, courtesy of Sean, uh, Sean Sanderson. Um, she's she's a wicked singer. You should check her out. She's on Twitter and Facebook. Um, yeah, so there's a fair few production um, videos out there. A lot of them deal with drums, um, and a, a lot a lot of them deal with big sounds um it's quite it's quite common um i i don't if if you're here for a drum tutorial <laughs> i think you should go and uh check out maybe like james dlr or emperor these people these people make really really good drums i wouldn't say it's one of my strengths um but i, I I'll, run, I'll run you through the track um now with liquid so to speak or liquid funk um a big part of the, the 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 tracks is the sound selection. Now, um, I spend a lot of time sampling. Um, I sample from 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 anywhere, totally indiscriminate. Um, I think you find that a lot of the funk and soul samples, which were which were big in the the, the birth of the genre, they, they, a lot of them have been used. So you've you've probably got to think outside the box a little bit to find the sounds that you like. I've got a huge library. I, I will I will take anything from any record um, and, and 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 chuck it in my library and, and see if I can use it. Um, there's a lot of ways of doing this. I know Technicolor. He's he's much more precise. The, he's he's got a smaller sample library, but it's all wicked. He 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 just chooses the best stuff, which I actually think is a really good way. I'm a little bit envious. I've just got a, <laughs> I've just got a huge library of of sounds, a lot of which are crap. Anyway, um. In here are, are some of the sounds that, that, that inspired me to write this track. Uh, I've taken off the original names, not not trying to be too awkward, um, but obviously it's sampling. It's, it, it, it does it does pose some interesting legal <laughs> legal positions. So I just I just renamed them. Um, this this sound here is you're here is the main inspiration of the track. I'll just play it now. Go back to the beginning there because you missed it. Yeah, you um, should be able to hear that that is the intro. I think if I flick, use them bits a little bit later in the track. I'm just going to turn my mic up a little bit. Um, I'm having to hold the mic as well, which is not making this very easy. But anyway, I'll keep, <laughs> I'll keep going. Um, yeah, so that's, that, that's, what, that's one of the sounds. Here's another one. absolutely love this sound. Maybe not so obvious. It's in there. It's it. You're you're here. Where it comes into the track. Um, the piano. The notes that are in there that are used. Um, it's just. I think I use this. To create a pad out of this. Um, and just some tambourines. So that's that's the main sound bank. Um, you'll see that I use um, I use Ableton. Here it is. For those that are not familiar with it, it can be quite alien. Um, this is the the clip clip window which I'm going to use today. There is a proper sequencer in there as well. Um, this isn't the actual project file. The project file that I use took many forms. Here's 
here's a quick look at it. Um, I I come actually. There's so many different versions of this track about. Uh, I I I'll discuss later, but it it came out of the box so to speak. I run a lot of the sounds through desks, so a lot of it has bounced down. I'm just going to try and have a have a little overview of of the 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 initial conception of the track. Um, so I've got all the sounds in here. This is um this is this is grouped up. So um, the intro very very simple. Um, just take a little uh, a little loop. Um, It's actually of that that sample. I'll just take the filters off it a minute. So you have to just time stretch it up a bit. Just to get just to get the sounds in time. Um, I'll take this down again a bit so you can hear my mic. Um, I think that's okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's the main sound. You're hearing the intro that it's just a very very simple technique of just filtering it, just to get just to give um, some ambience and just to keep it moving. So I think the filter stretches out during the intro. Um, there's actually I've just got an EQ8 on here, but I think I went into a bit more depth just to take out a bit of the just to take out the booming resonance because um, there are a few um, a few detail within the track. So you can you kind of can get a feel for how how that was created. Um, then, as for the piano, um, as you might be able to see where it's from there, I just changed it a bit. Um, it, it's I just took I just took them notes I think, and then maybe I've got another I've got another one in audio here, which I think is the last note, which I just I I, I used audio to to um because it needed stretching a little bit to get in time. So you've got these warp features enabled, which means you can just um, stretch the piano sound. Um, and if you do it, if you just do it a little bit, it's quite difficult to 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 hear how it affects the music. So it should come in there. Oh, I've got it out of time there. Let's try it again. So again, enable and you just play these little clips, which you play in time as long as you trigger them at the right time. So that's the piano sounds there. Um, I group these up. Um, there's a bit of this reverb's wicked. It's just a free little reverb. It can be really, really wet, uh, quite wide. Um, a bit of EQ. I think I just notched out some resonance. Um, took out the high end because in the actual sound, there's a lot of. There's a lot of dust and crust, which can sound quite nice, but it sometimes can mess with your with your high end of your beats. Um, so you can hear that the sounds there; they don't quite fit perfectly at the moment. So I, I spent a little bit of time just just to get them all just to get them all right um, to EQ out some of the bottom end. But, but that's 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 the main the, the main feel of the intro there. Um, as you can see, it's quite quite simple. Um, Gotta stop saying um. <laughs> yeah, I almost said it again there. Yeah, uh, so it's it it's just it's just about trying to create a vibe. I think I stuck some strings on there again. This is just a this is just a sample from I don't know where. Right, this is, you can see this is not quite in time at the moment. So I'll just. So that sounds a bit better there, but on the actual version, I went in and really just just pulled the audio apart just to get it all perfectly in time. You can hear how um, the strings just just add a little bit extra. Now, when when writing, um, when getting sounds together, when you get your first sound, um, I don't know. Say for instance, this, this intro is just the just the, the repeating piano, but whatever the sound, um, when looking for new sounds to to, to layer with it, I sometimes find just adding a string um, that's, that's that's in tune, um, that's perfectly in tune um, as well. I, I might add just just in the background, even if you don't use it, it can help you actually get the, get the picture of the sample and see if other samples will actually fit in key. Um, so you can just do it in a synth, just do a simple string sound. Um, just just once you got your first sample there, 
get just get just get a um, just get a string and then just see if your other samples are in key. Can make it much easier. Um, also, one thing I'd find if you're sampling from vinyl a lot, or, or really any records, you can find that it's not perfectly in tune for whatever reasons. You sometimes need to micro tune your samples, um, just 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 to ensure that they they fit with the track. I, I spent absolutely years bugging around with sounds which wouldn't quite fit, and I wasn't really sure. And it didn't really dawn on me that a lot of sounds would need this kind of micro tuning. I assumed that were on records, so the, the instruments would be perfectly in tune, but it doesn't work like that. Instruments can be out of tune, or the record can be pitched up or down as part of the mastering or the cutting process, um, particularly on vinyl. So, yeah, it's it's just important to 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 look out for the micro tuning. Um, so then, this sound is something you'll hear in the track. Just, I just worked in audio. Just took out the first note because it didn't really, it didn't really fit so well. You'll hear this sound over the drop. Just loop that up, so it play properly. Um, and elsewhere in that sound, I did, I did, I did get some other. So you reversed it there. Just put some delay on it. Um, Ableton delay, simple delay is wicked. Um, Sometimes it doesn't quite have the dirty sound that you want, but if you just want a simple echo into the background, just filter it off. You can pan it if you want to get really technical. So you've got there a sound that... So I think I use that at the end sometimes. And then also another part of it, I think I reverse to get a bit of a, a sound that's a bit like a trumpet. Um, Just reversed another part of the sample. Um, reversing is always a really, really good trick, particularly particularly towards the end of a, a 16 bar sequence. Um, just because it kind of sucks into the next one. Um, and then I, m I made some pads as well um, from the from the original sample. Um, just just I just put a li just a tiny little loop in. You can just hear a really small part of it, and then you can you can loop it. Doesn't matter how messy the sound is. I mean, I've even got some delay in there, but if you then just stick a filter on it, you can, because of all because of all the delays uh, and all the unnatural movements, it, it kind of creates a nice padding, literally. <laughs> This pad called Source, I think, with very similar technique. This is just a tiny little loop of audio of a sample. So yeah, just took, just take, just just take a small section that loops round. If I mean, you can hear it's even got a bit of a clicking in it, but it doesn't matter if you once you put some filter in on it. Just just creates a nice cool little effect. Um, so that's 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 the main that's the main part of the music dealt with. Um, there's also a classic little drum fill that comes in at the end. So what I do is uh, I'm gonna take out the intro at the moment, and if I trigger all these. I mean, they're not, they're not particularly mixed at the moment, as I say, I've just dropped them into a sequencer. You can, this, this, this is the, the kind of a lot of what's going on during the drop of the track, um, when the intro's not there. There's, these are little bits that I took from the original sample. Just delayed them to create, again, just to create little edits. Um, you hear another one coming in just about now. You can see I've just literally sliced out the sample. I've consolidated down now, so you've just got that part of it. So you get them at the end of at the end of some of the loops as well. Um, what I do is I, I, I often group my sounds up just to make the sequencer a bit a bit cleaner. Um, 
and this this also enables and works as a bus, so you can you can affect all the sounds together. Yeah. Um, w one thing I want to talk about is that w with with the track, um, I ran a lot of the buses, the music, the piano, the bass, the drums. Um, I run it into um, in, in into a mixing desk. Uh, <laughs> this is the first bit of random name dropping, other than Technicolor. Um, my friend works in a studio in, uh, well, he, well, he kind of owns a little studio in Chelmsford, um, where I grew up. And there's a band there called The Magistrates, and they, they were a really big, hyped band a few years ago. And Damon Album was meant to be doing their album, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, they ended up with the desk that was used to mix the Gorillaz first album on. And so uh, it was sitting there, so I thought I'd have a piece of it, basically. So I, I ran all the sounds. I just used run bu buses as stems, um, as, as stems through, through the... Uh, uh, just 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 through the desk and it would it would print out so uh, when i actually come to mixing it i had just a lot of a lot of audio and what that meant is for the musical elements particularly they would uh, uh they would be gelled together and just be as kind of an audio stem i'll show you that later um i mean how, running your running your tunes for analog gear does have a certain charm but it's not it's not always what it's all cracked up to be um it it does it can be awkward you can you can get most of the sound in the box but what i like about taking out i've got a little mackie desk here as well is that it takes it, it it just takes you out of the computer and you're using you're using real like dials and it just just add it just adds something it can actually it can actually be to the detriment of the track that um, but sometimes it works i mean there's a track that i did with technicolor and chromatic called serendipity and I just run the five buses through this desk, and it, and it, and it brought it brought it alive. Um, you'll see here. This is the project that I used to run it through, and it's taken a while to load. But it's so I just ran buses, and just, these are all like the desk. These are all like the desk. The desk's bounces. So I just ran these sounds just purely into the desk. Um, we'll come back to that later. Yeah. So so so. That's just something I, I like to do. Um, don't always do it. Uh, rolling sideways was mixed down on just a little Mackie desk um, straight from Reason. I used to use Reason. I still love Reason. Um, it's The reason I come into Ableton was because I wanted to work with audio. I do like that. Uh, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Ableton. It's, I, I love parts of it. I don't I hate other parts of it. It's, it's buggy. It was really buggy when I wrote this EP when using long stretches of audio with certain plugins it would just play them all out of time it, it delayed the whole ep by about two three weeks i think in the end right anyway so back to the track i'm digressing completely here uh, another sound that's in is, is is some little beeps i call them bass beeps there you go um just a, just a little riff there playing i think the track's in g minor it's playing f g d g um and it's octaves apart it's just a sound that i made in monopoly um i don't use too many vsts this is one i do use i used it in the hurting as well um i just uh, i'd love to have the hardware bit of it it's just it's, it's quite good for organy tones it's good for a lot of things but so this was this was a modified preset goldilocks keys just played a little note just got some delays on it it's really really basic um, the key to this sound is just the fact that it's very sparse. It only comes in occasionally during the actual track. So um, the bass, uh, I use um, a number of techniques for bass. Well, actually, no, <laughs> very few techniques for bass. Uh, I I use samples quite often, or I use one of two synths. Um, I use the MS core gang analog ms20 i think it is um or this one omnisphere uh a big part of the reason i use this is because uh it's it's kind of sample based really it does have a synth engine i use the synth here but um it's a, it's, it's a beast it's an abs it's absolutely brilliant vst uh, it can do everything and i'm trying to learn it but i'm only scratching the surface surface with what i do with omnisphere um this this the the bass in particular. Let's see if this triggered. Is a uh, this is the patch I made for overthinking. Um, 
it's very very simple actually it's 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 one sample one sampled waveform it's not 2600 pulse width wave and if i take the filter off take this one off as well it's actually quite nasty like big reese like bad company style or something <laughs> it's it's not it's not it's, it's it's not very liquid so to speak um but what it has is um nice movement i think caused by i'm not that technical i don't know if i said that <laughs> it's it's the 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 pulse width modulation i don't know why i'm pointing at the screen here because you can't actually see what i'm doing um creates this kind of movement and then once you once you apply some filters to it you can keep a lot of the movement um but because you got the filter you just you're just hearing the low end um in terms of processing again i i, I pulled the actual sound out into into hard into hardware uh, and just 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 drove the gain um simply as that in the desk maybe some eq in fact uh, i did go in and just notch out some of the resonances when you put a filter on sometimes some of the notes peak up and around so just put just i just took some time to eq the, f the final version um now notes are very simple octave g down to a and f it's really really but, but um what i liked about this bass line or why why i kind of thought it helped drive the track along is because it's, it's got a little bit of glide on the bass if you take that off it just kind of move it just it doesn't really it just kind of goes from one note to another it's still got some movement there but you put a bit of glide it means that they just it just drifts between the notes and then i think i actually went in and you know adjusted the envelopes a little bit just to keep just 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 to just to promote that kind of movement between the notes um this is the this is the version that went through the desk i think as you can see it's not very flat again i'm pointing to the screen <laughs> um so it's got a lot of it's got it's 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 not like a pure flat bass tone. It's got it's got a lot of movement in it, but it's, it seems to have enough to come through in the clubs. So I've, yeah, I kind of like that. Um, basic tip, obviously. Oh, I haven't done it here, but you switch that to mono, or if you've got if you've got a plugin that's got like a, a or, or stereo effect, just mono the very very low end. Just for argument's sake, I'll show you the the beats. Um, this is the kick and the snare. Um, it's the kick and snare that I've, I've layered out, out a couple of kick and the snares. There's some absolutely amazing tutorials about that stuff out there. Uh, so I won't won't go into too much, but I run them through the desk, which gave them a lot of character, uh, which, 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 which helped drive it along. And then this is just a, a bounce of the percussion. Uh, there's a there's a think break in there. There's a little huh. <laughs> I always go for, always tend to go for things like that. Uh, some some just some reverse reversey sounds. It's, it's nothing too spectacular in the beats. Just keeps it rolling along. Um, maybe the kicking snare is a bit attacky in hind, hindsight, but it's, the, 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 that's not what this track's about. So you can kind of get a feel for it now. Maybe a bit. So you, you've got the track driving along with very, very few elements there. Yeah, um, so uh, uh, there's really only one major thing I haven't touched upon and that's the vocals. Uh, the track was, as you heard it there, um, I, I liked it. I felt it was missing something. Uh, I know Sean through uh, through stamina, and we just went over to his one evening, and she laid it down. I think I'd sent it to her a week in advance, and she started to put it together, and we just we just we just did it in one night. Uh, she she wrote the lyrics. Uh, she she kind of what I'd been doing a lot is is uh, is is taking too long on my tracks. I still do. I still take so long. Um, not. Not wholly confident in what what I do, and I sit around and I tinker around. And this track, as you can see, was quite simple, and I, I kept trying to add stuff to it. I kept trying to, to 
just push more sounds at it and I was just like look you've got to stop overthinking if it roll if it rolls it rolls and she kind of got that so she she put down some lyrics um Okay, this is the the second bit of uh, 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 trivia in this. It was uh, it's actually laid down on the mic that I believe was recorded to re- used to record "Shake Your Body." Anyway, so, uh, Stamina had one of Shy's mics at his house. It's amazing road. I don't even know what it was. It had its own preamp. It's an amazing mic, which really really helped this process because it's the first time I worked with vocals. So having some good equipment there really really kind of helped bring it through. So you can hear it now. There's quite a lot that goes on. Again, I, I I run I run the vocals through uh through through desks. Um, did a lot of editing on it. I think hopefully here I might have yeah, I open this up, which which kind of details some of the vocal stuff. Again, um, you know this this but there's probably proper engineers that do tutorial on this, but I. You can you can see I'm pointing at the screen, but on this top channel here, um, this is where I just edited out, just edited out all them kind of little noises. Some sometimes they can work really well, but in the context of this track, I took I took I took a lot of them out. Uh, I also went in on a lot of the levels. Um, there is actually some compression on there. This. V comp, um, I'm not. My my what my biggest advice with compression is is that you don't know what you're doing, don't use it. I don't really know what I'm doing. I I, I kind of went 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 with a a lead vocal and then just tweaked around until I felt it sounded good. But I didn't overly compress any of the vocals. I went in on the actual automation a lot more, as you can possibly see. There's harmonies here and just just edited out bits that I didn't like and pieced it together and uh, you can if you can see here look at these eqs um so they they actually act as a kind of ds so when it's when it's quite se um you you, you i just ducked just ducked the eq and just turned it on you can see i'm kind of kind of coming on at certain points just to and it can be quite brutal on its own you hear it kind of cutting in there um but it just takes out a lot of the sharpness once you put reverb and stuff that sharpness really come, comes out so i just kind of uh left it at that see how long i've been rabbiting on now this is probably <laughs> quite long enough to be honest uh so yeah so i bounced the vocals down run them through a desk um and mix it all together uh there's not huge amounts of editing going on throughout the track um, hopefully this will play because it does actually push my computer to the limit uh, you can see where I bounce the the music down into into one but I just cut it or I would actually I did actually edit it from there um, let's see what happens so it's a bit glitchy so I've already done a lot of the automation so I can't really sh- I can't really show you that but you can kind of see that I'm running the levels hot, hotter than they should be tended to turn it down the master that's something I'm trying to avoid um, trying to keep it running within itself um, I still bust everything out so the drums even though they've been through desk they've got some they've got a bit of saturation um, this is amazing this is a free plug-in scope or something it means you can see your waveform in real time I tend to use it um, I've got one here, yeah, you can see it on the masters. You can just see what it looks like here. Yeah, I used to export to have a look at the waveform. Now you can kind of see it as it is. Um, send returns going a bit crazy here. Um, some echo. Uh, sure, I think that's some reverb there. Some more reverb. Some more reverb. Not really, just, just adding a little bit of ambience there you're actually getting it all not just the sounds um yeah so that's that that's that's a big breakdown of the track um hopefully hopefully you 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 picked up something that was useful there uh this you kind of hear 
this, as you can hear, it's just the l l looped intro. Um, what I'm going to talk about is when you when you found a sound that you like, um, don't be scared to just to just to just make a couple of versions of it. See if you can see if you can make different sounds from that one sound. So you've kind of got the pad here, which is from the intro. I mean, you can hear another pad just LFOing off it. Uh, it's technically I use, there's a track called Don't Say It, which is coming out early next year, and I literally, the whole track, well, the, 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 the base of the track is, is pretty much just from, just from one eight second sample. It's a sample that's got guitar, it's got a bit of strings, and they're panned left and right, so I separated them out. Um, and then pitched it down an octave, and from that I got the bass. Uh, and it's, you can really just, like, this is just one sound that's just sweeping, there's a bit of LFO, the filter's just moving in and out, and there's another sound just laid off top of it. And it can, it, 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 it can create a really, really nice a ambience. Um, and I think the main thing I'd say about this track um, is I just play around, I don't, particularly know exactly what I'm doing um I just I, d I just let's have a bit back music um I just and it, yeah uh just fuck around at the sequencer basically uh sometimes it works most of the time it doesn't um don't get too bogged down in techniques that you think other people are doing just do what you think sounds nice and just try to like you know just try and f find your own sounds and, and and go from there i'm trying to i'm <laughs> i'm trying to do it myself but i'm getting there you know um yeah so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed if you've got any questions um just facebook me luke lsb um I've, i'm quite talkative on there thanks bye